Welcome to the National Museum of Computing. Um, we're here today to do something quite special, which is to open one of our new galleries. And uh, to do that, we've got someone very special with us. And I'd like to introduce you to Dame Stephanie Shirley. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Do you, like me, feel sentimental as you come into Bletchley Park and are reminded of the Wrens with their coding machines and the wonderful work that happened here in the World War II? But somehow the years drop off when you come into the National Museum of Computing because I find myself surrounded by the computational devices of my youth and it's really a good feeling and congratulations how far you've got, already got. One can really only wonder at the speed of progress over the years and looking ahead, um, I predict that the next 50 years will be just as exciting. This important museum, and it is important, um, echoes the development of the industry over the years. First the hardware, then the software and the applications, and finally the people that make it all happen. Their stories personalise the artefacts that you have here. And to celebrate the heroines of computing, I'm here to open the Women in Computing Gallery. And this is sponsored by the young upstart Google. Only 15 years old, apparently this week or this month, and the name, if, for those who don't know, is a nice play on the word Google, which is the arithmetic term for one followed by a hundred zeros. So Google, Google, wonderfully generous. I myself am classed as a late pioneer of computing, um, late as distinct from early, um, and I followed people like uh, Ada Lovelace, um, surprisingly the legitimate daughter of the mad, bad and dangerous to know romantic poet Lord Byron. And her software complemented Babbage's hardware back in the first half of the 19th century. She was the world's first programmer. And she has her special Ada Lovelace Day, March the 24th, which is all about sharing stories about women in science and technology. Then there was the late Karen Spark Jones, uh, late as opposed to living, who concentrated on the linguistic aspects of information science. And also the very much alive, she's here today, Sophie Wilson, designer of the Acorn Micro and the ARM processor, which has made such a difference to our lives. Everyone, but everybody, recognises the, the name Tim Berners-Lee. His mother, Mary Lee, was also a late pioneer. Uh, not forgetting Grace Murray Hopper of COBOL fame and much else, uh, trivially remembered as the person who found the first bug in the EDSAC computer. I had the privilege of getting to know her a bit. Um, she spoke to me about her sister, who had chosen marriage and family life, where she herself had committed to a vigorous professional career. And she envied me because I could have both. And in a sense, this is probably why Dr. Hartley um, invited me here today. And when David asks, we all do. In the 1950s, women started coming out of the universities with decent maths degrees, much needed in the early days of computing, but left the industry on marriage or when their first child was expected. What a waste of people's skills. What a waste for the nation. So in 1962, I founded what became a major software house employing 8,500 staff, of whom 70 had become millionaires. Yes, 7-0. I pioneered distributed computing. It started as a company of women, a company for women, promoting flexible homeworking as a 20th century cottage industry. 
people laughed at the very idea of a software house because software was given away free with the hardware. And they laughed even louder at my crusade for women. But it was fine as a woman's company for 13 years until equal opportunities legislation came in in 1975 and made the positive gender discrimination that we were applying illegal. So we had to let the men in if they were good enough. And thereon the company gradually became more balanced between the sexes, which is as it should be. As president of the British Computer Society in 1989, I launched the Computer Conservation Society. And I do welcome the National Museum of Computing's emphasis on the, the role of people. It's not just the technology. But why a gallery for women in computing? Girls must take advantage of the revival of computing in schools and recognize and really grab the opportunities that our wonderful sector offers. Indeed, Britain's economy demands that women are not just consumers, but rather creators of new technologies and applications. Although nowadays girls are getting the best marks in school and dominate most universities, the Women in Computing Gallery will promote positive role models for women and so encourage girls and women in critical thinking and engineering. It shows the heroines of computing as historic facts to inspire the upcoming generation. I'd like to th thank really all the volunteers who effectively make up the National Museum of Computing. Um, some of them full time, some of them ad hoc. And particularly give sincere thanks to Google and the other donors of time, memorabilia and funds who make this historic work of conservation possible. In Google's relatively short life, it has demonstrated its commitment to organizing the world's information and, typical of its culture, had been extremely generous in its support of the Women in Computing Gallery. Uh, on behalf of the museum, and in real and virtual presence of so many distinguished guests, it is my pleasure formally to announce the Women in Computing Gallery open.